Let's open our Bibles in Exodus chapter 5, from verse 1, Exodus 5, from verse 1. I don't know if the microphone is better there in Texas. Here is pretty loud. I don't know if uh, the problem is in the transmission. Yeah, you can lower it a little bit because give me a little feedback. Exodus 5 from verse 1 says the following. Afterwards, Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, Thus says the Lord of Israel, Let my people go, that they may hold a feast to me in the wilderness. And Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord that I should obey his voice to let Israel go? I do not know the Lord, nor will I let Israel go. So they said, The God of the Hebrews has met with us. Please let us go three days' journey into the desert and sacrifice to the Lord our God, lest he fall upon us with pestilence or with the sword. Then the king of Egypt said to them, Moses and Aaron, why do you take the people from their work? Get back to your labor. And Pharaoh said, Look, the people of the land are many now, and you make them rest from their la labor. Amen. Brethren, may be seated. My brethren, the people here at this moment was already thousands of people. What started out with a small family, a small group. You remember? Joseph, right? He had been sold and he came to Egypt. The Lord honored him. And then Pharaoh allowed him to bring his father, Jacob, and his siblings. Then Joseph was the element of connection to life, to his family and his people. 400, year, 400 years have passed, and now Israel is no, was no longer a group. There were already a nation inside of Egypt. And what did the Lord instruct them to do? To Moses to say to Pharaoh. What did he say? Did you ever forget? Let my people go, right? Let my people go. The Lord now gives the means to Moses to go before Pharaoh to ask the deliverance of the people so that they could celebrate to the Lord so that they would have a feast in thankfulness to the Lord. It is interesting that the people here they were no longer the same people that came in the times of Moses, of Joseph. Imagine, 400 years. How many generations have passed? Now, these people, they had no idea of what it was to live a life outside of Egypt. They did not know. They had no idea of what was the desert. They did not know anything because they were slaved, slaves at that moment. And when the first call came, everything was all right. But as people grew, the pharaohs changed, the government changed. Now the people, they became slaves. A hard labor, hard work without right to anything. They only were allowed to leave there. They, and they only knew that that's all they knew. But by the way, Egypt was the greatest nation of that time. Everything of the best was, was available in Egypt. It was the country that we, we could say the first world, high level. Everyone surely wanted to live in Egypt because everything that was good, 
you know, comforts, the resources, science. It was limited, but they had it. Everything, everything was in Egypt according to the standards of that time. But the people now did not know anything beyond what was their life. Good or bad, they lived in Egypt, right? Good or bad, they lived in, in Egypt. But now Moses entered into this scene with an order from the Lord. The request was asked, um, please, um, pleasantly, and, but Pharaoh did not accept. But now let's understand here. The people lived in Egypt, surrounded, of, surrounded by what they had, water, food. They were slaved, they worked, but they had whatever they needed in order to continue on their daily lives. But now Moses proposed to Pharaoh and he says, allow the people go all the way to the desert because there we're going to have a feast in offering to the Lord. Can you imagine you leaving a place where you have every, every access to all everything that you needed to survive in order to go to the desert? It's a complicated thing, don't you think? Now, Pharaoh, he may have understood in the two sides. First was the greed, because the people worked and reached Egypt. Pharaoh would never allow it to happen, even if he was going to the, the corner, let alone going to the desert. But this request from Moses, rationally speaking, let, let's leave the Bible aside or the spiritual aside a little bit. Now, rationally, does it make sense? Taking a multitude, bringing them into the desert in order to offer service to the Lord? Moses had no idea of what God had asked, what God has instructed. The vision of Moses, we're going to go there and we're going to return, surely. But Moses did not know. No one knew what God had prepared for, for them. They had no idea what was about to happen. What do we expect in a desert? What, how is it to live in a desert? No one knows here. But we see on TV, We see in uh, TV commercials, we know a little bit of what it is. You don't see any any green. You see you do see no water. It's just sand that never ends. There is no shade. A terrible heat, and on the same place, and exactly the same place at night is very cold. And how would they be able to? Would they be able to bring everything there? Or, in other words, where, how would they find there what they needed to offer service to the Lord? <coughs> Complicated thing. Even for the people also, surely for some, it was difficult to understand that and accepting it. because they did not know what was to come. They had no idea of what they were going to be facing there in the desert. Pharaoh hardened his heart, does not allow, afraid of losing the people, afraid of losing the, his slaves, the, pro the productivity from the people. But now comes a moment in which the Lord acts. We all know. Um, the will of the Lord is fulfilled, and now the people depart towards the desert. The project of God was fulfilled in the life of the people. And what now? What do we do? The people left. No, uh, just one day. Surely they got prepared, but still, it was a situation like this. 
when they begin to walk and they cross the Red Sea, the miracles begin to take place. God began to act on the behalf of the people, the miracles, one after another. They have no idea where they were going, but they were guided by the Lord. During the day, a cloud that covered them. During the night, a column of fire that warmed them up. And during the day, if they got thirsty, God would say, Moses, touch on the rock. And the water came out of the rock. In the middle of the desert. My friend, do you have any idea how difficult having a well of water? It's not easy. When you, when you speak about a forest, there's sometimes water fountain. But in the desert, water coming out of nothing it is a miracle from God. Today it's difficult. Sometimes you have to have a machine. You have to calculate, know where is the, the sheets of water on the ground, uh, per, uh, dig a hole and put a pump. But imagine there, they had not, none of this. But the Lord operated. They did not lack water. They did not lack food. In the morning, the Lord provided the manna. In the afternoon, the birds would come and the people would feed off of the birds. You can you imagine? Something, there's nothing better than this. Shade and fresh water. So, and the Lord instructed, asked the people not to be worried. Because tomorrow, there's more. Tomorrow there is more. But there are always some people there who are stubborn here. You don't need to raise your hand so that you don't expose yourself. There's always someone that is stubborn, one that, that disobeys or does not trust, that does no has no faith. So he went there and he, the manna, and what happened the next day? It rottened because the blessing of God is renewed every, every morning. The Son of God lives off of faith. Whoever believes, lives by faith. My brethren, this text has something to do a little bit with our lives. For example, we began a year in 2022. No one knew what was going to happen. No one knew what to expect uh, out of 2022. A year after pandemic, change of government, everybody was waiting for it. And then it comes, was not 7-1, but was 1-0. You lose, you lose. A year in which everyone was undecided. How is it going to happen? What do we need to expect of 2022? Family, work, health, profession, what? Now we're coming to the end of this year. Uh, there's, there are actually two weeks to the end, a little more than two weeks to, for the end of the year. What now? We're here by faith. We came here because the Lord operated a miracle. God operated in the same way that God operated in the desert, in the same way that the hands of God were raised upon the people there in the desert, God also has given us great blessings. And it was not easy. Pharaoh just was not, did not want to let go. And the people does not want to lose the ones who are departing. Because we are departing. Our life here is, is just temporary. The Church of God wants to leave. The Church of God wants to depart because our soul wants to return to the Creator. And our desire, my brand, is to depart. 
and the order of the Lord, let my people go. And the order of God was fulfilled, independent of uh, the greatest leader of the time, independent of the government today, independent of what happened, the sadness, the defeats. But we are here because the Lord has provided to us this great blessing. The means for us to be here, standing with health, working, and the Lord blessing. Sometimes it was not according to what you wanted, what you dreamt, what you were expecting, what you imagined, was what was your projects and plans, but independent from it, the Lord has been good. The Lord has given us the means to be in, the, in His presence. Many f ha have fallen this year. Many have fallen. Many abandoned. Many complained. Many murmured. Many were displeased. What was God's project in their lives? But we are here standing. The Lord has carried us. The Lord has brought us on His lap lap on his arms the, the tribes are many but the Lord has helped us to this day we have not lacked the bread we have not lacked the water we have not lacked the direction we have not lacked the hands of the Lord and God's staff to guide us we did not lack the direction from the spirit we did not lack the provision and we did not lack the love from God we do not lack the comfort and the consolation from God because the Lord loves us. Independent of our nature, independent of our being, the Lord loves us. Could have been better? Yes, surely. It could have been better in the government, in sport, this and there, that, and work. It could have been everything different, but we trust in the Lord. The Lord is in control. And if we allow the Lord to act in our behalf, if we do not hinder God's actions, if we do not, do not place our lives, our selfish interests, our hearts, our own projects in the middle of what God wants to do, it could have been better. But many times, man, our ego enters in the middle and then you you create a problem we displease one and another and then but we have a, an entire new year ahead of us 2023 is going to be a year also of many help us of many challenges many challenges we do not know what we're going to face but we are sure of we are sure of one thing god is going to be beside the ones who love and trust and fear the lord maybe you today this year we do not want to hear the voice of the lord and give attention to the voice of the lord that's all right we have another year an entire year ahead of you but look the year passes very fast Allow the Lord enter into your heart and allow the Lord to reveal himself to you. The church lives off of a miracle. We need to live off of a miracle. We need to see the action of God. We need to see the moving of the Spirit in our behalf. Amen? And the word says the following, Let my people go. Let my people go that they may hold a feast to me in the wilderness. We are every day celebrating to the Lord. One day the Lord took us out of Egypt. We were linked to the world. We were linked to living as slaves for the rest of our lives, slave to sin, slave to the destination, uh, destiny away from God. But the Lord now has placed us in this uh, desert. 
the Lord has placed us in this world in which we are, in the situation in which we are, but the Lord is guiding us. Here the Lord is operating miracles and our will, our desire is to be under God's hands. There is no other better place to be other than under the protecting hands of the Lord. Amen. May the Lord bless us in a glorious way and that we may give worth. Maybe you looked at it and, and thought, oh, why should it glorify? It was a, a year where I, I missed. I didn't save any money. Nothing changed. But if you are here, a life, it's because it's God's will. Many have fallen. Many were left behind in the desert. But the people continued. The people arrived in the promised land. The people went to the place that God had prepared for them. And we also, we are going to go there. Because what we desire is this, is to go to heaven. And that what we desire the most is to walk in this world and go through this world, seeing God's miracles, seeing the resources of the Lord. But what we desire the most is to go to heaven. That's our greatest desire. May the Lord bless us in, in a special way and that you may place your life in God's altar. Recognize what was done that was not good and above all, that you re may recognize God's power and that you may submit yourself and open our heart and allow the Holy Spirit to carry you and guide you and lead you to do God's will. Amen. Let's listen to a song.
Go to Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Go to God. The first letter to Paul, the Corinthians, says the following. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was, he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke and said, Take it, and it's my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after the super saying, Take the cup and do this in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drink this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of this bread and drink of this cup. Now I would like to invite the, bread and, uh, the deacons and ushers to come to the front. You can pick up, pick it up, you can pick it up, you need to serve this, you can go. The deacons from Houston also can Put here the Church of Houston on the screen. There you go. Amen. Who is in control of the bread? Leo? Leo, you prayed for the last time, right? It was Leandro. Okay, so I'm going to ask Leo to pray. Thank you, the Lord, for the bread. And then they can, Fabio can glorify the Lord for the, the wine. Lord God, we praise your name for this food, the bread that represents the precious blood of the Lord. Give the to us. We praise you, Lord, for this blessing. We ask you, Lord, that you may sanctify this, and that everything may be done according to the honor and glory of your name. We pray, therefore, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Lord, glorify your name for this wine, this juice that represents the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. We glorify you because we know, Lord, that this sacrifice was not in vain. Now we ask that you, you may bring to our memory the importance of this love and that you may bless each life in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. My brethren, this supper is the supper of the Lord, and the supper of the Maranatha Christian Church. You who, surely you, you are part of another church or another denomination, if that's the case, if you are in fellowship with the Lord and you have been baptized in the waters, you can also participate in the supper with us because this is the supper of the Lord. And the moment is for you to examine yourself. So surely Pharaoh is saying, no, go to work, go to produce for me, go to do this, do not participate in the supper. And, and not that the brand, that's not what it is. The enemy is trying to prevent us from participating in the supper of the Lord. But this is a moment in which you will speak with the Lord, confess to the Lord your sins, your failures, and you're going to make an, uh, an agreement with the Lord, an adjustment with the Lord. Because when we participate in the supper, we are proclaiming the death and the return of the Lord Jesus. When we participate in the supper, we are validating and bringing, giving worth to what He has done for us. Because the death of Jesus gave us access to eternal life. And the arrival of Jesus, the return of Jesus, will take us to the fulfillment of this blessing. So tonight is a, a moment in which you, you, 
me, we're going to place our lives before, before God's author. Speak with the Lord. Lord, maybe I, I may not deserve it. I don't have the, the means to participate in the supper, but based on your word, according to what is the power of the blood of Jesus, I'm going to participate in the supper by faith. And I know that you will bless me. The children cannot participate, does not, they do not participate in the supper because the blessing of the Lord is already with them. The blessing of the Lord is already with them. It is different. And the supper is a symbolic act. Eating the bread and drinking the, the wine is a symbolic act. What is important is that we are here all before God's altar. Amen. The supper is for you to give your testimony of your life to the Lord. So you're going to, at this moment, while we are going to sing the song, the elements are going to be served. You, you'll be speaking with the Lord, placing yourself in the position of the servant. Because the Lord Jesus is our example. Amen. He is our example. Oh, but I, I'm going to base myself on what? In Jesus. You don't need to base yourself on a leader or leadership. No. Have Jesus as the one who is going to direct you. The one to, in, that you can mirror yourself to. And Jesus is love. Jesus is forgiveness. Jesus is eternal life. Amen. Let's sing a song. First the bread will be served, and then the cup, and together at the end, let's eat all together.
Anyone who did not receive one of the elements? Has everybody received the elements? The brand from Houston, has anyone, everybody received elements? Examined man himself, then eat of this bread and drink of this cup. Glory to God. Glory to Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to God. Let's stand up, my brethren. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Holy, holy is the name of the Lord. Filhinhos. My children, my love and my peace I poured out upon you. And I tell you, great have been your trials, great have been your difficulties, furnaces, deserts, but at every moment I have been the strong arm in your church. And tonight, my angels are walking amongst you. 
and they are distributing the victories that you have receiving from me, the strength that comes from my part, and I offer in, to your hands new swords, new shields, helmets, sandals. Some have lost their armor, but now tonight they are going. They are receiving once again, because my kingdom needs to have continuity, and I count on you for this battle. For the ones who are wounded, I'm taking care of you right now, closing the wounds with my balm has come to bring relief, to calm down your being. And my presence does good to your soul, my children. All the pain went away because I took upon me your needs. And tonight is a night of feasts. When you open up your lips to glorify my name, your song went up straight to my throne of grace grace as a sweet smell and your gratitude came into my presence and uh, uh, opened up victories for your lives many came here uh, discouraged but when they sung my they sang my songs and glorify my name uh, chains were broken doors have been opened and your victory is going to come in God's time glorify my name church because tonight my my flames that are walking amongst you burn everything that does not glorify me glorify me and warm me up your heart your hearts and I purify you as silver tonight and I tell you that your walk is not in vain your 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 seeking me and your faithfulness and I add to you uh, uh, adornments like the bride as needs the adornments to proceed just soon I'm going to send my beloved son, the groom, who's going to take the church to live eternally with the groom. Praise my name, church, because the Lord has done great things for you this year and is ought to do for the year to into the year that is coming. Bless your God, who is the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. Truly, we're going to now we're going to eat first the bread and then we're going to drink of the wine. Lord to Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Holy, holy, holy is the name of the Lord. Let us sit down. We're going to sing another song.
Glory to God. My friend, the Lord was showing in many spiritual gifts, uh, and one, in one of the gifts before coming to the church, the Lord was giving us access to a table when we arrived to the church, where we were, were served, where water was served to us, vessels with water, there were Oh, an angel would wash our feet, hands, so that we could leave this place with the means to walk and work for the Lord. Amen. And in the moment of the distribution of the Supper of the Lord, our understanding regarding the church and what it is to be a servant of God was widened our understanding of what is God's project was expanded. But you, the Lord was also showing a rain that was falling upon us and received seed, the Lord giving blessings, everything that the Lord has shown, the Lord has done tonight. We'll leave this place in the same size. Nobody is better, nobody's worse. We are all children of God. We are all servants of God. So there is no one who is better or worse. And he can, I can't. That doesn't exist because the Lord operates in unity. The Lord blesses whom he wants. Amen. Let's stand up. One brother or sister from Houston may glor pray glorify the Lord. Lord, we praise you. your name. We praise the Father because you love our lives, because you do not treat us the way we deserve. We praise you, Lord, for this privilege, which is sitting at the table with you, being fed by the Lord, being healed by the Lord. Exalted be your name, Lord. In the name of the Lord Jesus, amen. Hallelujah. Receive, Lord, our adoration to you. We are in a feast, Lord, because we know that the, you are present. The Ark of the Covenant is present. Your presence is real, Lord. We can feel it by faith. Your angels walking amongst us, the direction of your spirit, the strong hands of the Lord upon our lives, upon our homes, our businesses, our health, Lord. We glorify you because you are our God. You are the God of Israel. You are the God whom we serve. And we ask that we may continue strong, serving the Lord. Take us home in peace and give us night, uh, a night of rest. Give us an end of a year in your presence and that we may never leave your presence. We glorify you, therefore, in the name of Jesus. Amen. In your name we say that the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, and sweet and tender consolations and the gifts of, and the virtue of the Holy Spirit, may be proud upon all of us, now and forevermore. Amen. The church may be seated. Tomorrow in the morning, we're going to be here at 10.30. All of us have already been blessed by the Lord. The Lord has spoken to us. We had a manifestation, true manifestation of the presence of the Lord. So tomorrow we'll be here for, once again, to be learning from the doctrine of what is the Word of God. Amen. If you need a prayer, we're here at your disposal. But as I said, all of us have already been blessed. It's already 9 o'clock. The Lord, the Apostle blessing have already been given. So tomorrow we'll be here again. Now, peace of the Lord Jesus.